Nelson Rockefeller once said of his famous grandfather, John D. Rockefeller, My grandfather broke no laws, but a lot of laws were made because of him. Similar statements can be made of J. Edgar Hoover. During his tenure as director of the Federal Bureau of Investigation, Hoover acted in ways that we would now see as unscrupulous and against the very fundamentals of the U.S. Constitution. He performed then-legal wiretaps, gathered information on civilians and politicians alike, and attempted to squelch civil rights protests by using sole personal authority. Hoover impacted history by harnessing more influence over American politics, ranging from local and state governments to the highest command of the federal authority, than any other individual in history. And as a result of his vast influence in seemingly omniscient files, the federal government took measures to ensure that no one individual could ever hold such power again. During World War I, Hoover worked his way through the ranks of the Justice Department and aided Attorney General A. Mitchell Palmer in his infamous Red Raids. In recognition of his assistance with the Red Raids, Palmer appointed Hoover as Deputy Head of the Bureau of Investigation, an institution that was limited only to gathering information and sending that information to local law enforcement agencies with no authority to arrest the suspects themselves. On May 10, 1924, President Calvin Coolidge appointed Hoover the director of the Bureau of Investigation, which, with Hoover's help, became the Federal Bureau of Investigation, which kept Hoover as its director. One of the first acts of Hoover as the head of the Bureau of Investigation was the breakup of the notorious Dillinger Gang. The Dillinger Gang was infamous for their string of bank robberies throughout the Midwest, which caught the attention of both Roosevelt and Hoover. Hoover's use of the Bureau of Investigation quickly brought an end to the criminal reign of the Dillinger Gang, and as a result, Roosevelt realized the potential of having a strong federal law enforcement agency headed by a determined crime fighter such as Hoover. Roosevelt appointed Hoover's FBI as the leader in domestic intelligence and counterespionage. In 1942, a small number of Nazi saboteurs came to America with a mission to strategically sabotage important railroads and factories. While patrolling a beach, a member of the Coast Guard overheard a strange conversation in German. This conversation was immediately reported personally to Hoover. Once the Nazi saboteurs learned Hoover was monitoring their every move, they decided to surrender and abort the mission. Because of Hoover's prevention of Nazi sabotage, Roosevelt gave Hoover the authority to wiretap any suspected Nazi spy. Roosevelt was the first president who gave Hoover the authority for unlimited wiretapping. He was also the last for Hoover never again needed to ask for presidential permission because of the immense power he now controlled. Hoover's wiretapping led him to gather files on numerous politicians and suspected spies. One such suspected spy was Inga Arvad, a writer for the Washington Times Herald, which was a conservative, anti-Roosevelt, isolationist paper. Because of her German background and criticisms on the Roosevelt administration, Hoover suspected her of being a Nazi spy. From Hoover's wiretapping, he learned that Inga was having an affair with a young U.S. naval ensign, John F. Kennedy. Despite lacking the authority, Hoover ordered Kennedy's commanding officer to immediately transfer him to the Pacific in order to prevent Inga from having access to the naval base. In the Pacific, Kennedy became a war hero, thus launching his political career. Kennedy's military service aided him in his runs for political office, and as Kurt Gentry, author of J. Edgar Hoover, The Man and the Secrets, stated, even though Hoover felt responsible for Kennedy's rise, he never bragged about it. Because of Kennedy's affair with Inga and his political potential, Hoover kept a watchful eye and a growing file on the young politician. Hoover's true power had only begun to grow under the Roosevelt and Truman administrations. Upon his election, Dwight D. Eisenhower focused on the growing concern of communism spreading to America. Eisenhower, knowing Hoover to be a fervent anti-communist, furthered the Oval Office's dependency on the FBI to be the leader in domestic intelligence. By this time, Hoover became more powerful than the Constitution itself, having the ability to wiretap and investigate anyone he deemed suspicious in the United States. During Eisenhower's administration, he tripled the number of files on both politicians and civilians alike, and by the time of John Kennedy's election, Hoover was at the height of his power. John Kennedy realized Hoover had the power to destroy his political career. Because of this, in an interview, Kennedy stated that he would reappoint Hoover as director of the FBI. 
Later in a private conversation, when asked, why did you not remove Hoover, Kennedy responded, you don't fire God. At this time, God was an appropriate name for Hoover, as he truly was omnipotent, omniscient, and with his FBI, omnipresent. John Kennedy may have been afraid to challenge Hoover, but his younger, enthusiastic brother, Robert Kennedy, felt it was his duty as Attorney General to check Hoover's power. Though Hoover gathered files on Robert Kennedy, his files never were as incriminating as the ones Hoover had on his brother John. This lack of control over the young Attorney General irked Hoover, and his only method of fighting back was through threats of releasing files on the President. The J. Edgar Hoover and Robert Kennedy conflicts lasted only until John Kennedy's assassination, but the damage to Hoover's power was significant. Even though Hoover was at the height of his power when Robert Kennedy became Attorney General, his power began to wane when Robert Kennedy was leaving office. Robert Kennedy's bold challenge to Hoover's seemingly endless power inspired other politicians and even other federal agents to question Hoover. Hoover remained director until his death, but with each passing year of the Johnson administration, his power gradually weakened, and by the time of the Nixon administration, it was in full decline until his death. However, Hoover never lost total power, for after his death, Clyde Tolson, Hoover's associate director, shredded many of Hoover's secret files to ensure that they would remain a secret forever. The effects of Hoover's powers are still felt today. Modern directors of the FBI can only serve a maximum of 10 years, and the ability to wiretap needs to be approved by Congress and then authorized by the President. No other law enforcer will ever have the same influence or unchallenged power as Hoover did. Hoover's half-century-long tenure as the director of the FBI made him one of the most powerful men in America, and his legacy continues today by the daily efforts of the FBI and innovations such as Hoover's fingerprint database.